Hello and a warm welcome to the sweet spot, your go-to golf tipping show brought to you by the Racing Post. Now, I suspect plenty of you all attention on Cheltenham this week, but fear not. We are still very much concentrating on the golf here on the sweet spot. We've got four tournaments to look back on, a very exciting tournament to preview this week. Thank you for joining us. We shall get into proceedings. Steve, um, how's stress levels at the moment, both in life and with golf, I guess? <laughs> well, the Kenya Open seems a long time ago. I will say that, Jack. You know, when Darius Van Drill won the Kenya Open, anything seemed possible, didn't it? But um, uh, yeah, last week made me feel that everything is impossible. So um, yeah, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm longing for the Kenya Open. I mean, it, 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 we'll come on to live Hong Kong. I think that was the that was the key to everything last week. Really, live live Hong Kong. I mean, life is a, is a roller coaster as it is. When you add in a, an each way fourfold on four golf tournaments, I mean, things can get very up and down, can't they? Well, I was really up for the quadruple header, as you well know. Um, you know, you couldn't contain me last week, but um, <laughs> it was a very it was a very humbling experience when the golf actually started. Um, but if Cameron Smith had won that live golf Hong Kong playoff then all would have been right with the world. Um, but I knew I was in trouble, Jack, when he went six to four. I don't know if you were following it, but um, mm. going into the playoff, he was six to four favourite going into the playoff. And I never have any luck with six to four chances. Whenever my player get, goes six to four, I get very twitchy. Tiger Woods went six to four with eight holes to play in the 2018 Open Championship when I was on for 300 bags. And as soon as he went six to four, he, he, he made a double bogey and, and, and capitulated. So, yeah, I was very twitchy when I saw Cameron Smith was six to four. And then in the playoff, he did not play like a six to four favourite, did he? Did you watch the playoff? I, I mean, did. Yeah. I mean, let, let's talk about it because it, it's clear that we need some some therapy here, Steve. It yeah. was um, Abraham Answer that, that ended up winning the tournament. I mean, he was in control for the majority. Cam Smith came through late on. Um, oh, Abraham Answer is a, is, a, is a strange one, Steve. I mean... Me and my friends watched this man up close and, and person in live Orlando um, ah. last year. And I just, we all watched him and we were like, how are you getting around these courses? He doesn't hit the ball anywhere. He's no. all these graphite shafts. He's about five foot two. Yeah. And yet he's always up the, the top of leaderboards. It, it was a, it was a, it was a tough beat this one. Yeah. Yeah. Abraham answer was a 33 to one chance making his course debut. As you say, this is his sort of course, you know, a short, tight track, but it was his course debut. I thought he'd fall in love with the layout eventually. I tipped the fireballs to win the team event at 11 to 1, and he was the only fireball who hadn't played Hong Kong Golf Club Sorry, before. I, I still can't get these. <laughs> it's like you're sort of tipping robot wars or something. You know, <laughs> the fireball. Sorry. Well, he was the only fireball with no course experience. Um, but he, he, he hadn't been playing well, Jack. You know, he hadn't been playing well. Well suited to the course, as you say, but he hadn't been playing well. He was poor in the final round of Live Jeddah. So I thought, no, I can't risk him. I can't risk him, even though I think he's suited to the course. Then he goes 15 under par for his first 36 holes in Hong Kong. You know, an amazing start to his, his Hong Kong golf club career. Um, such a bemusing game. And then he's, he's, he's six shots clear going to the final round. He's seven to one on. And I've mm. pressed up on Cameron Smith at 40 to one because I, you know, he, he answers going for his, his first live title. You've gone in again, had you? I've gone in again at 40 oh. to one because I, I couldn't believe they made answer one to seven, given he's never won a live event. Um, you know, he'd never gone down the stretch at Hong Kong Golf Club. Um, you see, yeah, such tight, narrow fairways. I, I didn't, I'd never thought it was going to be smooth. Um, so I was, you can imagine my excitement levels when our pre tournament 20 to one tip and um, you know, with, with the top up at 40s. Taking control of the tournament, um, you know, he, he, that playoff, that second shot in the playoff. I mean, how do you explain that? It was awful, wasn't it? I mean, it was, it was. It, he, he had a great, great angle in from there. Is it, is it an ideal tee shot? But the approach shot was absolutely abysmal. You know, I, it, I was, is it, is it complacency? I mean, what do you put it down to? I don't know. I, I mean, I've been unimpressed with with this year. I've been unimpressed with Cameron Smith and John Rahm in yeah. pressure situations. We, you know, we, we'll talk about this because the Masters is looming large. We must discuss. A lot of people would have John Rahm and Cameron Smith on their mind for the Masters, wouldn't they? Cameron mm. Smith in the playoff on Sunday, perfect drive, lovely angle in, and he just wafted it out to the right. It went plugged in the bunker, and he's dead as a dodo, and he just gift, you know, took all the pressure off Abraham Answer because Paul Casey was messing up as well. Do you think you lose a bit of that edge when you're on live? Because, you know, you, you know you're taking home a pay packet. There's no cart. There's not that intensity that you, you probably yeah. get on the PGA Tour, particularly when you're starting out. And I guess over time, that edge just, just wilts away ever so slightly. I think you're right. And I think the pressure doesn't really hit until till late. Like in a big, prestigious 
PGA Tour event, 72 holes, you sort of feel the pressure on the first tee sometimes, don't you? And these these you know, magical venues that are well known, um, big tournaments. When does the pressure really hit for these live players? Yeah, they're so relaxed. The mu- the music's playing. I think they're sort of carefree for so long, and then you get in the playoff, and the the pressure situation really hits you. Mm. And um, you know, Smith will be so disappointed with how he played in that in that playoff. I mean, Lucas Herbert was on the sidelines, one of his stingers teammates. Is he a stinger? No, he's a ripper, isn't he? He's a ripper. Uh, one of his uh, ripper teammates was sort of whispering and making jokes about how how many bad shots Cameron Smith had played on that hole. Um, so. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. It's disappointing with Cameron Smith, but yeah, John Rahm, be careful. There'll be loads of people who don't watch live golf. There's loads of people that don't bother watching live golf for various reasons, and loads of casual punters will be looking at John Rahm for the Masters. But again, two over par for his final five holes. Jack dropped out of contention late. All four of his live appearances have been the same, bang in the mm. thick of things, and then drops out of contention. Like yeah, a lot of people are talking about him making the adjustment from 72 holes to 54 holes. I think he needs. 45 hole events to to be a runner at the moment. Like he's, to use greyhound parlance, he's become a short runner. You know, he pings the lids and then fades away. Um, a pathetic effort from John Rahm again. Um, and, well, I, ho- um, I hope it didn't. It, it, Cam Smith didn't spoil your Sunday, did it? Because it was it was Mothering Sunday, of course. I hope you still sort of <laughs> were, were, were in good spirits, were you? Well, obviously it finished at a poor time, wasn't it? About 10, 10 o'clock on, on Sunday morning. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, no, it, it is what it is. Um, it was, it was a good bet. 20 to one Cameron Smith was a good bet. No regrets. Um, Cam, Graham McDowell was a good bet. I mean, Graham he McDowell was, was a good yeah, bet. Yeah, he was. You know, 100, 151 Graham McDowell. He was two shots behind with four holes to play. Like John Rahm, he, he, he had two late bogeys, um, finished tied eight for about a million players. I, I had him each way, eight places, but you only know, scrape a minor profit from all the from all the dead heat action there. But um yeah, interesting tournament. Um lessons learned. Absolutely. No regrets, as you say. Let's have a look at the Johnson work where there were where there was a lovely story. It was one by Matteo Manacero. And and funnily enough, Steve, I, I was flicking through, I don't know why, I was flicking through your book yesterday. And I one of the chapters I think was called Looking Into the Future. And it was all around Matteo Manacero. And I thought, well, that's a, you know, you quite, you, you you nailed the future. I mean, this is a man who was the youngest ever winner on the European tour, faded away, has come through yeah. the Alps tour and the Challenge tour since. And, and it's one, a nice bounce back uh, story here. You're absolutely right. You're absolute prodigy, Matteo Manacero, the youngest ever winner of the Amateur Championship. Uh, I think he may have been the youngest world number one amateur. He was definitely world number one amateur after was. winning that amateur championship. Uh, youngest player to make the cut in the Masters. He was 16 years old in 2010. Great, yeah, in 2010 oh. Masters, he made the cut, 16 years of age. Then he won on the European Tour, as you say, in 2010. Um, he won in 2011. He won in 2012. He won in 2013. The BMW PJ Championship at Wentworth, mm-hmm. the youngest ever winner of that. Um, so world at his feet, age 20. Made some swing changes to try and add length, then badly lost his way. A decade in the golfing wilderness, um, you know, Anthony Kim style decade mm. in the in the wilderness, but you know, not through choice like Anthony Kim made. Um, then he won twice on the Challenge Tour last year. Now he's landed a long overdue fifth DP World Tour, tour title at the age of thirty. Um, yeah, and I think we forget, don't we? I mean, when you we just sort of sit back and record these, and we forget these names. But he must have been through a hell of a lot over the last decade, and to get back into the winner's circle. And I don't, look, it wasn't the biggest tournament ever, but it was. It still had a half decent field. Yeah, incredible, incredible achievement. Oh, he's absolutely buzzing. He's absolutely buzzing. I, I, I did have a look at him last week. I mean, you, know, <laughs> you can have a look at all of them, can't you? But I considered what him price because. Was because it? He was 200 to one, but but Glendower, Glendower, obviously a good fit for him because he, he's still a mm. short hitter. He never did really add any left short, accurate hitter. Um, but like Abraham answer, just because it's a good course fit, you don't necessarily go from because his form was not great. You know, he had only one top 10 finish since those challenge tour wins. Um, you just need to see more form before you can play, really. Um, but yeah, delighted for Matteo Manassera, because as you say, it all happened so early for him. We were writing about him in 2010. I think that book came out. Mm. Um, and we were backing him when he was a teenager for titles. And you expected him to go on to great things. And it and it hasn't happened. It may may well do. Do you ever forget that you're a published author, Steve? You're a, you know, New York Times <laughs> bestseller, were you? you know, make that <laughs> well, I think it trades for about one pence on, um, on Amazon <laughs> these days. So yeah, it's not something I'll write home about. 
Pardon the are you pun. are you uh, are you almost glad to see sort of the back of this little little swing in on on the European tour? Because I, I must say, Steve, when I shut my eyes and I go to bed, I sort of see Tom McKibben and you and Ferguson sort of <laughs> looking down. It's I feel like that's all I've seen the last sort of month. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. I was pleased to see Tom McKibben finish ninth on on Sunday because <laughs> I always play eight places. So if I had a stuck with him, that would have hurt. But yeah, yeah, I've, I've certainly had enough of me you and Ferguson's for <laughs> for a few weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Any other uh, things to note from the from the Johnson work? Where should we move on? I think we should move on because yeah, it has a quadruple header, wasn't it? And we'll get to the, the main event of the week now. Yeah, Arnold Palmer Invitational. It was won by Scotty Scheffler. We were laughing, weren't we, last week, Stephen? We were saying, will he listen to Rory? Won't he? Rory yeah. obviously suggested that he changed to a mallet putter. He mm. did listen, and you were sort of texting on the Wednesday going, he's listened, like, <laughs> do we need to sort of pivot? Do we, do yeah. we need to change? When Scotty Scheffler puts well, he wins. It's as yeah, simple as that. And it is. You're he's right. Convincing, and now he's going to be on everyone's radar for what's a big sort of month ahead in golf. Absolutely, yeah. Rory McIlroy must be wishing he kept his mouth shut, isn't he? Yeah, he, he talks too much, does Rory? I mean, he suggested that Scheffler's putting problems would be helped by a switch to a mallet-headed putter. I assume that Scheffler would be too proud to take that advice, but. There it was at Bay Hill. The first time Sheffer had used a mallet-headed putter, which is more forgiving. Uh, the first time he didn't have any marks on his golf ball. He made mm. two changes last week. Um, I like that, actually, Steve. I, did, do you putt with a line on your ball? No, 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 no. No, because I, 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 I always think maybe pros can get away with it, but amateurs are so bad at reading greens that they never set it up on the right start line anyway. So it's completely pointless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And for Scheffler, he, it makes it more about feel then. Because he, he, yeah. he used to spend so long sort of getting it lined up and, you know, getting oh, all and in, yeah. filling his head with, you know, worry. Um, so um, I think he's made two brilliant moves and um, he produced one of the best putting weeks of his career last week. And the frightening thing for his rivals is that he improved every day. His worst mm. putting round was on the Thursday. Then boom, boom, boom. He was the best putter in the field on Sunday. <laughs> I mean, yeah. And as you say, whenever Scheffler putts well, he wins. It's not just bluster. That's no. fact. Statistics back that up. It's fact. He's the best ball striker by a mile. He just needs a decent, half decent putting week to be competitive. If he putts well, he can't be beaten. Um, so it's a massive week for Chef for that. Um, yeah, the final round pivotal for the majors ahead, I feel. Um, and, and yeah, that is the one silver lining I took from last week. Last week was as dark as Darth Vader, but I, I take one silver lining from that dark cloud in that we got a nice price about Scheffler in our pre-season majors, Zaka. Do you remember that? Mm, yeah, we've got, oh, I absolutely <laughs> remember that, yeah. That hasn't started yet. We've got Scotty Scheffler to win the Masters there as the first leg of our... And, and three of our four players in that fourfold have won this year. So it's been a nice build-up to that, Acker. Mm. You know, Rory McIlroy's won, Dustin Johnson's won. We just need Xander Schaffele to buck his ideas up by the time the Open comes around. And our, our, our major Zaka's going to come in. So let, let's, let's stay positive. I think the other concern for for Scheffler's rivals is that he, he does produce these kind of runs, doesn't he? These runs of wins. I remember, was it a couple of years ago when you were on him at, and he won sort of, was it three times in four weeks or something? And he, he does yeah. produce these spells. And, you know, as you say, we've been saying, if this if this bloke can put together even a half decent putting performance, he'll be in. Yeah. And convincing as you, you like last week, he is a remarkable tee to green golfer. Yeah, I don't think you can underplay the significance of last week. You know, the first tournament with the mallet-headed putter, which, um, you know, takes a lot of pressure away. You don't have to be perfect. He's, he's, he talked a lot about that last week, about he's taking the pressure off his shoulder. He's not trying to be perfect. He's, you know, he's becoming a field putter with the mallet. I think you're going to see more consistent putting with that club. Um, I think, um, as I say, you can't underplay the significance. Sheffer is, is, is the man to beat in everything going forward. If um, Rory's obviously given Scotty some great advice there, if, if Rory was to sort of creep into your shed now and whisper something into your ear, Steve, with a golden nugget, what do you think he'd say to you to kind of <laughs> get this week going well? I think he'd say back Scotty Scheffler. I think, <laughs> I think, I think you do, you, honestly, you do see a reverence. You do, last week, if you noted, look all the, look all the post-round interviews on Sunday night, you see reverence towards Scheffler. I don't think Chef is given enough respect by the, the media member, but the players, they all say that's why he's world number one. You know, you, you know, and they, they, there was a fear. There was a fear factor that went across the circuit when Scheffler started working with Phil Kenyon, the, the putting supremo, because everyone mm. said, oh, if he starts putting well, then we're doomed. 
doomed. Uh, so, <laughs> so I um, I think Rory is worried. I think Shane Lowry just he was laughing his head off in his post round interview on Sunday, just saying, "Yeah, well, what can I do?" Sort of thing. Um, so yeah, I think yeah, I think there's a fear factor that's that's there now, mate. And I think um, Rory McIlroy will, will concede that. I was quickly going to mention before we move on, Steve, about Shane Lowry because he's he's been in and around the you know the top of the leaderboards for a, f- a few weeks now, and yeah, and going into this spell, still you know a big prices for these tournaments. I suspect um, plenty will be looking at him with with with, with hope. Yeah, you'd make him a runner this week, wouldn't you? I mean, he he had a terrible record at Bay Hill before last week, um, so he'd be, he'd be chuffed to bits with a with his effort there. Um, yeah, yeah, Shane Lowry, Shane Lowry would be there and there about. There and thereabouts. Um, <laughs> I love saying that. I mean, Ludwig Albert better not be there or thereabouts. Such a disappointing first two rounds from him last week. Um, you know, he went into the weekend and tied for last place. And I, as you well know, I was scrambling around trying to get some six to one about a top 20 finish because I thought he would come roaring back through with early tea times and he finished 25th. I got six mm-hmm. to one top 20 finish on uh, before round three. And uh, he finished 25th, but he, he, he has played it. We must mention he has played Sawgrass before. He's not one of his Sawgrass tips. He's played in the junior players championship there and did, did OK. Finished seventh, I believe. I forgot that first round from Ludwig. I mean, hard to forget. Didn't he make something like six birdies and finish over par? Oh, yeah, it was up and down. Like it a, was, yeah, like remarkable. A, like a yo-yo. Um, so, um, yeah, keep an eye on Ludwig this week. He, he could spoil our party, but he's not one of my four. But yeah, we've got okay. one more tournament to review. <laughs> we do, yeah. We'll we'll make this short and sweet. Yeah, Fear Scotty, uh, if you're not on him. Uh, it was the Puerto Rico Open. It was won by Bryce Garnett. It was his second win on tour. It gets him back on to the PJ Tour for another three years. Um, I will be very open here, Steve. I didn't watch any of it. <laughs> Bryce Garnett was 150 to 1. A four-hole playoff with Eric Barnes. As you say, I don't think anyone else in the world, apart from the Garnett family and the Barnes family, <laughs> gave a monkeys who won that playoff. <laughs> I, uh, I had no interest in it myself. Yeah, yeah, you mentioned Mother in Sunday. I mean, it was not unfolding the way the mother in my house wanted it to. Um, I think I would have been hung, drawn and quartered if I said I'm devoting some time to, to follow the Puerto Rico Open on Shot Tracker. So I... I didn't have a. I didn't watch. I thought you were going to say that she was on Eric Barnes or something. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I didn't put on a good show on Sunday. Um, Did you cook I, dinner? No. Nah, well, yeah, I suppose. I, I. Yeah, I suppose I did in a way. Yeah. Um, but in my, a way, my, 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 well, I, I cooked bits of it before. <laughs> um, before sh- before the mother in the house, <laughs> my wife took over. Um, she claimed my 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 corn on the cob was not coming. Uh, as it should do. I mean, I, my tactic with the corn on the cob. Well, what? Hang on. What is, did you have? To, if, if corn, I thought you were going to say it was you had nothing a roast special. Dinner. To be to be fair, we went out at lunchtime. Okay. Um, but yeah, she she did all now. Yeah, I wasn't on my game this 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 mother and son. I wasn't on my game. But um, yeah, I just I just I didn't produce the corn on the cob. Um, my tactic is to boil the kettle. I don't often do cooking. I'm not very good at it. But rather yeah. than wait for it to boil. I like to just smack in a load of boiling water anyway and work from there. But um, it wasn't seen as the best tactic. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I couldn't follow the Puerto Rico Open. So I, I had to, other, I had other had challenges. A, a soggy corn on the cob or what was wrong with it? I didn't just serve up pure corn on the cob. There were some other no. things too. I think there was some um, fish cakes involved. But yeah, it, 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 it wasn't amazing. But yeah, yeah. Mother and son, they didn't go well. But it went well for Bryce Garnett. <laughs> uh, and, and and all I would say about the Puerto Rico Open, <laughs> what I would say, <laughs> what I would say about the Puerto Rico, I've got one thing to say about the Puerto Rico Open. I was pleased for Hayden Springer. Um, Were you? <laughs> yeah, I was really pleased for Hayden Springer. He banked a decent check. As Hayden Springer has been through the mental ringer. Um, his, his firstborn, his firstborn, his daughter um, died at the age of three. Oh my god! Um, and and that was in November last year. Oh. Then in December last year, he earned a PGA Tour card at Q School. Amazing mental fortitude. Mm. And then he finished tied third in Puerto Rico on Sunday to give himself a nice platform to keep that PGA Tour card. So, yeah, probably the best golfing story of the week was the fact that Hayden Springer has got this springboard for the for the for the year ahead. Well, that's a nice way to end our, our review, Steve. Uh, a, yeah. a lovely story. Um, Thank you. OK. Yeah, just the one tournament to preview this week. It comes in the shape of the Players' Championship. Very much looking forward to this one. Before we get into the market leaders, Steve Palmer, where are we playing? Talk us through it. 
The stadium course, TPC Sawgrass, Ponta Vedra Beach, Florida, 7,275 yards, par 72, four par fives, a peak die design, which hosted since 1982. We switched from a May date on the calendar to a March one in 2019. So we've got lusher terrain these days. Balls don't run like they used to in May. So course form from 2019 onwards is worth more than that prior. And we must mention that the 2020 event, which was abandoned after one round due to COVID-19. Um, yeah, we, we we can still check out the form from that. We've got one round of form from that. You must remember that, Jack. That was the moment when we all realised um, something serious was going on. You know, the, it the, was the, that the, Cheltenham week, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, when when the unofficial fifth major came to an abrupt halt like that, we all knew mm. that the... Uh, the S was going to hit the the F, so to speak. Uh, I'll never forget that moment. I'll never forget that moment. It's quite a scary moment. You, you, you didn't really sort of think it. I, I personally didn't think any, it was anything hugely to worry about. But then I thought if the unofficial fifth major is being abandoned, then uh, <laughs> we're in big trouble here. Um, I remember the, the the sort of days after sport had been cancelled, Greyhounds were still going for a little bit, wasn't it? An Irish racing. Everyone was just sort of punting on like, I don't know, rom for dogs or something. It was a really yeah. strange week or so. Well, it was a strange time that we'll never forget, wouldn't they? But we, yeah, we've got a field of 144 going to post, $25 million in the kitty, $4.5 million going to the winner. And the weather forecast is excellent, Jack. Sunny, warm and relatively calm. Wind speeds increasing slightly each day peaking with a moderate breeze on Sunday. Always a crack of this one. Let's take a look at the top of the market. Unsurprisingly, Scotty Scheffler is your favourite, around about 11 to 2. Rory McIlroy, 12 to 1. Justin Thomas, 18 to 1. Jean de Chauflay, 22s alongside Hovland, Cantlay and Homer. Salatoris, 25 to 1. Bigger the rest. Steve, it's the players. It's Cheltenham Week. How many tips for this one? <sighs> I really hope your voice is okay after that. Four. <laughs> who are we going for as the main selection? Max Homer, 28 to 1, who has found his A game again. He had a disappointing West Coast swing. His expectations are always extremely high for those events. His game went awry at a bad time for him. His last seven rounds, though, have been greatly encouraging. He closed with rounds of 65, 70 and 69 and finished 16th in the Genesis Invitational. Took some time off, then returned last week with rounds of 71, 69, 71 and 73 for eighth place in the Arnold Palmer Invitational. That 73 on Sunday was magnificent when you consider he was three over par through two holes of the final round. He was proud of his fight back. He spoke about it afterwards. His tail is up going into the Players' Championship, and he loves sawgrass. He used to live in Florida. He's not one of these Californians who feels out of place on the uh, the East Coast. His sawgrass debut came in that ill-fated 2020 event we just mentioned. He carded a 70, gave him a share of 37th place before the, the, the world went mad. Then, in his 2022 performance, absolutely awesome. Huge draw bias. We must stress this. Huge mm. draw bias in 2022. Anyone on the wrong side of that, that draw was pretty much doomed. Homer managed to finish 13th. He closed with a 66. He was world number 36 at the time. Uh, yeah, he, now he returns as a member of the elite. He, well, he, he, he was almost a member of the elite last year. Finished sixth last year. Okay, mm. Eight under par for the weekend. Everything points to, to Max Homer having a big players championship. I think he's by far the biggest threat to to, to what is a really strong favourite this week. No draw biases to, to to worry about this week? No, no, I don't think so. I mean, no. these things can change in a flash. But as I say, that most of the wins on Sunday. Um, so I think we're going to get a clean fight, um, which is very important when you, you know, you, 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 very important when you, you know, assessing an 11 to 2 favourite, isn't it? Because if there is any danger of draw bias, you won't be getting involved before you know the tea times. Um but yeah, there isn't. Don't you worry, you old son. You reminded me um, of that <laughs> chap off uh, the Vicar of Dibley then. You ever used to watch that? No, 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 no. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say there was a draw bar. So I, <laughs> I was reminding um, myself of Graham Taylor then talking to Rob Shepard. I said, don't you worry, Jack. Don't you worry, Jack. You worry, Jack. Don't make the rest of us worry. <laughs> uh, Max Homer, Steve Palmer's main pick for the Players' Championship. Three to go. Who's next? I'm glad you mentioned the draw bars because, yeah, I, I, I'm confident we can eliminate that. And my next best is Scotty Scheffler at 11 to 2, who I think is a really solid favourite this week. I don't think any sane punter can go into battle this week without mm. 
some sort of investment in Scheffler. I mean, if you can get five to one or bigger and 50 odds, plenty of places, it's such a watertight wager for me. I mean, how many places are you going to need to guarantee that the water doesn't come out of this wager? Uh, yeah, this, this is this is Jack, this is the most pathetic players championship field I've ever seen. All right. If anyone calls this the unofficial fifth major now, they need to be locked up for the safety of themselves and others. Aaron Badley is going to post. Zach Blair is going to post. David Skins is going to post. All the live boys are obviously absent. 17 of the last 30 major champions are not in this field. You, mm. you can't call this the unofficial fifth major. Live golf has, has taken them all away. It just feels so weak to me. And I struggle to envisage a scenario where Scheffler finishes outside the top five this week. I've well, I, I think, yeah, Go I on, think with, the, with, with Scotty and, and the price he is as a favourite, you're, you're, you're essentially looking for reasons not to back him, aren't you? And you're looking for decent reasons. And, and usually if someone's, you know, 11 to 2, something like that, there is a good reason. Yeah. I'm looking at it this week and going, I can't think of one. And I was almost hoping oh. you'd tell me one to put me off. Yeah, but. yeah, yeah. Well, I always like to find a reason to oppose the favourite, but I think the price is extremely good. I mean, mm. I, I've done a bit of a 58. I've done a bit of a quarter of the five. You can you can spread it. I mean, I, I don't see him finishing out of the top five, but yeah, I've got a bit of eight to, as, a, as some security. And in this week of weeks, yeah, this is the festival. All the best horses in the planet are uh, are at Cheltenham, you know, showing off their, uh, their, their, their tongue straps and whatnot. Um, so why not put your banker horses? Everyone goes into Cheltenham Festival. They've got all these bankers, haven't they? Mm. Um, why not put your banker horses with the chef in doubles? How about a state man Scheffler double? <laughs> I've just made my nose beat. How about a Ballyburn Scheffler double? How about a Sir Gino Scheffler double? <laughs> Have you done these or is your nose is really bleeding, by the way? I'm just going to let that and see what, see what happens with that. <laughs> How about a state man, Ballyburn, Sir Gino, Scheffler, quadruple? Or maybe you can use other sports other than the horses. You know, I think Luke Littler is a magnificent bet to win week seven of the Premier League darts on Thursday. I've got seven to two on that. So maybe you can have a Scheffler, Littler each way double. Um, Did you see that Littler was getting in sort of a bit of argy-bargy with Pokemon? Did you see yeah, that? yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a weird character, isn't he? That <laughs> he is, he's a bad loser, isn't he? Yeah. There was no need for that. No need for that. No, I thought Littler handled it well in the end. And yeah, Littler's the best arts player in the world at the moment. Um, so yeah, yeah, potentially have the Scheffler Littler double. But yeah, the point is, Scheffler could easily follow his Bay Hill victory with a sawgrass success because he, he won. He won by five shots at Bay Hill on Sunday. He won last year's Players Championship by five shots, and that win twelve months ago, Jack, we must mention came despite him finishing 48th in the putting stats that way. <laughs> can, you, can you get your head around that? Oh, he was the 48th yeah. He was the 48th best putter, and he won by five shots. This week, with his confidence through the roof after that Bay Hill putting performance, yeah, it's reasonable to expect him to be better than 48th in the putting stats this week. He'll probably be the best in the tee to green stats, because he normally is. You know, he's he's going to win or, or, or go extremely close to winning. You can't underplay the significance of last week. I thought about backing him last week, but I thought he persevered with the blade, as we discussed. I thought it was too risky you know, to, to go in, given his putting woes. But now he switched to the mallet. This could be the decision that solves his putting issues um, forevermore. You know, it, it's, it's a mindset. Jack, isn't it? He expects the whole putts now. I was, I, was, I, was, I was going to say oh. exactly that. It's a, it's a mentality thing, isn't it? Now he's shown that he can do it. That's almost yeah. 90% of the battle. You know, these pro golfers, are, you know, they, their technique is good enough at, at most things. Yeah. It's those little margins. I mean, I mean, the, the price you see, Steve, you would have probably taken in a really strong field, wouldn't you? Let alone one where, as you say, the, the live golfers aren't here, etc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. And I, I think the point to make is that even when he was expecting to miss, because he's been going for weeks this season expecting to miss putts and he's finished in the top 20 in every event he's played. He's finished outside the top 10 only once. Um, so now he's got that sea change in mentality where he's going to expect the putts to go in. I just think it's going to be he's going to be, he's so dangerous. And, you, and just just to mention his other visits to, to the Players' Championship, he carded a 68 in that 
2020 event that was expunged from the record books. That was his debut. So he was seventh before it was abandoned. Mm. Uh, and in 2022, he was on the wrong side of the draw when he finished 55th. So he can ignore that. It's a good effort to finish 55th in those circumstances. He had no chance of winning in that weather. So, yeah, Homer and Scheffler are your main golf bets this week. But um, if yeah. you want to do a bit of jiggery pokery with Scheffler and bring in horses and Arrowsmiths, uh, I understand. Absolutely. Yeah. Glad Scotty Scheffler's on the list. Uh, two down, two to go. Who have we got next? Min Woo Lee, 50 to 1, who played in the final two ball with Scotty Scheffler in last year's Players' Championship. You know, what an amazing course debut that was from Min Woo Lee. What invaluable experience that final round was. If history repeats itself 12 months on, I would think Min Woo can give the chef more of a game. Um, yeah, he ended up finishing sixth last year, did Min Woo. Um, but yeah, 12 months on. Yeah, you know, more experience, more ready to to, to win a, a tournament of this stature. Yeah, I think we can get we could easily get the chef against the chef because uh, uh, Minwoo calls himself the chef, doesn't he? Yeah, you know, he let him cook. He loves cook. he loves yeah, yeah, let him cook. So yeah, I think he could cook up a storm this week. Um, he was runner up in the Cognizant Classic the week before last. Um, you know, underlining a liking for tough Florida courses. Forty fourth last week. So yeah, I think Minwoo's got the lot. He always has done. He always will do. Um, 50 to 1 big prize yeah absolutely such a talented player as Min Woo okay fourth and final pick for the players Steve Siwoo Kim my lord who is also 50 to 1 now yeah, a course and distance winner you'll be hearing a lot of that this week at the, at the festival he's a course and distance winner he's not going to be wearing any cheek pieces he's not wearing blinkers uh, that we're aware of <laughs> well, I don't think he's going to wear a tongue strap but I wouldn't rule it out because he's <laughs> He's such a nutcase, isn't he? In, in, well, I was going to say, Blinkers in that Masters, when he sort of ended up putting with his three-wood or whatever it is, <laughs> might, have, might have helped quite nicely. <laughs> he is. He's, he's, he's an absolute nutcase. But I say that in the nicest possible way. I've got so much affection for Siwoo, one of the greatest characters on the circuit. But this week, I think when he turns up at Sawgrass, he turns up with so much self-belief because mm. he's done it before here. He was, the, he was the 2017 Players' Champion. He was only 21. He was the youngest Sawgrass champion we've ever had. He's a four-time PGA Tour champion now, 28 years old now. He's never been happier. He won that gold medal in the Asian Games in October. No longer has he got to worry about military service for his country. And this season, he's he's just been rock solid. Top 50 in every event he's played. Four top 25s. 14th at Pebble Beach. 12th in Phoenix. I just think he steps up a gear at his beloved Sawgrass. His, his, his Sawgrass record is so good. 23rd on his, his debut here in 2016. Then he won it in 2017. That 2020 event has been expunged from the record books. He was second after the opening round of that. Um, Carter a 65. Um, he was ninth in 2021. Wrong side of the draw in 2022. Um, decent effort last year. Yes, yeah, Siwoo is a man to be feared at Sawgrass. I mean, he's got fond memories of, of Sawgrass. You you must have fond memories of Siwoo, Steve, mustn't you? I mean, there must be players that you make the short list. You go do a bat them, don't you bat them, and then they get onto your onto your betting list for the week. And you must go, yes, yeah, Siwoo, I feel comfortable with him. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love Siwoo. Even if we weren't having a bet, I'd be supporting Siwoo. Um, so, yeah, I love Siwoo. I love this tournament. I, lo- I, I loved back in Webb Simpson to win this tournament in 2018. You know, the greatest year ever was 2018. And you know, we backed Webb Simpson for that. And that was joyous. Um, and then they changed it. Yeah, they changed the date and the calendar. That was the last of the May ones. Slightly different players you want to be back in now in, in from 2019 onwards. Yeah, the lusher terrain, the big hitters are much more suited to this test now. Um, now, really happy with those four. Let's hope yeah. for more luck than we got last week. Absolutely. Always a great tournament. This we, let's let's talk about some of the, the other market leaders, I guess, Steve, that you haven't. Um, backed. We shall start with Rory McIlroy. I mean, he's given all of his best advice to Scotty. He, <laughs> must, he must have been thinking he wish he hadn't. Well, he's been struggling with his irons, isn't he? I mean, yeah, the alarm bells are ringing in the McIlroy camp because his iron play has been so poor. His driving is magnificent. He, he's been superb off the tee, but he's been pulling loads of irons. Um, and yeah, with the Masters looming large, I mean, yeah. it's heartbreaking for the McElroy camp because we all want him to win the Masters at some point. And here we are, the most important aspect of your game with the Masters looming large is to have your iron play on point. Mm. Um, so it's a big month for McElroy to get that sorted. JT, any interest there? The 2021 champion here loves this course. Um, 
but he had more control and more confidence back then for sure. Mm. Do, do you remember he had that deliberately yeah. hooked driver? Yeah. He was loving the deliberately hooked driver shot. Um, very entertaining week that the way he was hitting those those drives. He's not at that level at the moment. You know, he's, he's slowly but surely getting back to his best, isn't he? But mm. um, yeah, he's, he's he's definitely a runner, but uh, I just don't think he's got the self belief that he had back then. It was eighteen, wasn't it, when he literally just hugged the side of the <laughs> yeah like, yeah just. But the camera so angle made it look like it was just sinking into into the water, and it was close. It was really close to yeah. going. In. Yeah, it was a very aggressive shot. But um, yeah, I don't think he's quite at that level. But it's a definitely a danger at twenty to one. Um, how about Jamba, Victor Hovland, a couple of those guys? And- Shafale, was so poor at Bay Hill on Saturday. I definitely prefer back in Shafale on the west coast. Victor Hovland. I mean, such strange comments coming from Victor. I mean, we mentioned how peculiar this year's been for. For, for well, we started Victor. the year, even. We were so keen on him, weren't we? Well, I'm just left shaking my head whenever I hear him talk at the moment. I don't know what's going on. I, 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 you listen to his media conference before Bay Hill. He said how he preferred his swing in 2021. He said last year he was drawing the ball too much. Mm. Uh, you know, I, I, I wonder whether he had some sort of falling out with his coach. You know, Obviously, he, he, he switched coaches, isn't he? Mm. I don't get how you can have such a downer on on what he did last year. He won the Memorial. He won the BMW Championship. He won the Tour Championship. He won the FedEx Cup. And then he decided to make these swing changes. So he, I just don't know what's going on there. Something very odd. And he was terrible over the weekend at Bay Hill. You know, he, he, how can he criticise the swing that won in the FedEx Cup last year? He was brilliant mm. last year, wasn't he? Mm. And then he, he got rid of the coach and, and brought Grant Waite in. So, oh, yeah, it's, it's easy. Yeah. Takes one to know one. I think Ovlin's lost his marbles. <laughs> <laughs> uh, were there any others at bigger prices that nearly made it onto the list, Steve? Or you seem fairly content with your form? Um, no, I am fairly content. Very, I, I toyed with Sung Jae Im. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah, he was the only one remotely close. No, I'm very happy with my four. I mean, I, I, I'm, yeah, I think it's a really tight, solid um, each way staking plan. Yeah, back them all each way. I know. Yeah, you, know, you can throw Sheffer in a few win doubles with with horses and darts players, but I think if you have each way bets on those four, um, yeah. I think you're in for a, an enjoyable tournament. When you glance over there to look at your shortlist, are they all on sort of printed paper or something? Uh, they're actually on cue cards at the moment. Yeah, yeah, oh, are cue, they? yeah, cue cards. Do you um, like shred them before the Thursday starts or something so that you're not reminded? <laughs> or, are, they, are they just kept for revision purposes? No, no, they're kept. They're kept. Yeah, I, I shred them when the, when the recycling bin comes around on a Monday. Yeah. But uh, uh, yeah, yeah. No, I'm really happy with my four. And um, yeah, 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 I'm going to enjoy this. Are you betting on any horses? Yeah, I'll have a few. I, I was, we were laughing off air, Stephen. You know, Cheltenham preview season feels like it starts basically the day after the, the you know, the, the previous one finishes. Yeah. And um, I am convinced at this stage, I have heard every single horse this week tipped up at some point. <laughs> um, there are anti-post slips that I've probably lost. Um, I don't really know who I'm on at this stage. Um, no. but I'm, no. just gonna, I'm just going to enjoy it and, and see what happens. It's That's raining so there. It just feels like everywhere in this country is underwater. It's chucking it down there at the moment, isn't it? It's disgusting. Yeah, I can't. I can't imagine there's been one day this year that, that it didn't rain in, in Weymouth. Mm. Um, no, absolutely disgusting. So yeah, it's, 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 it's sorting out the mudlarks. Is it the mudlarks mm, are going to be up for? Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I, I may. I may have a little look, but obviously I don't know much about horses. So. Um, but you you like our internal um, staff tipping um, competition, don't you? Have you had a go oh, on yes, that? Oh yes, 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 yes. I'll have a go on that. I'll have a go yeah. on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I think State Man it would be my nap of the festival for for what for what it's worth. <laughs> OK, um, how are you how are you making up um, for the for the poorly cooked call on the cob last week? Are you, are you taking the good lady out or anything? Well, I'll tell you what I'm doing. I'm, I'm doing some some uh, research on how to train puppies because, you know, we've got a dog coming. Did I tell you that? Is it, is it there dog, yet or, or it's um, it, it, March, the um, March 31st, just in time okay. for the Masters. I've got our, our first family dog coming. Yeah. Um, so I'm a bit nervous about that, to be honest. So I'm doing a lot of research um reading up just before bed about um how to train a puppy so if anyone's got any tips in the in the comments mm. section um yeah all i know about is greyhounds and we're not getting a greyhound um so um yeah, yeah it's I quite, quite be great for you though steve because after you know after a tough sunday cam smith's just lost in a playoff you can take the dog out for a nice long walk yeah you know you can talk to the dog and the dog i'm sure will give you great advice back it, I yeah think it'll be a really therapeutic thing for you Take the dog up the pylon, can't I? Exactly. We can just stand by the pylon together. Have you been to the uh, pylon recently? <laughs> I went to the pylon yesterday, actually. Did you? Oh, it was that bad. 
for old time's sake. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, the view's still spectacular up there. <clears throat> the bink the bink and bumps have been there for for centuries and you know will probably be there forever yeah it's the ancient burial ground there of this guy i just say things and expect people to know what i'm talking about yeah the bink and bumps is where the roman soldiers were buried so you have you have these humps where there's loads of skeletons of oh, really? of, um, of dead roman soldiers underneath the the lumps and that um, sort of puts things into into perspective for you. Well, it? yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's a, it's a short ride, isn't it? And mm. you mustn't get too downbeat about anything. Um, Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Um, yeah, keep your yeah. pecker up. Enjoy the Cheltenham Festival, and um, I'll see you on the other side. Well, let's recap the four before we depart for the players. Um, talk us through them. Max Homer, Scotty Scheffler, Minwoo Lee, Siwoo Kim. OK, um, great stuff, Steve. Two tournaments next week. Back to some form of normality. It's been three, then four, then one. I quite yeah. know where I stand at the moment. No, no, no. That's it. You don't know whether you're coming or going, do you? Um, but yeah, yeah, we have got two next week. Two next week. We will see you on Tuesday to go through that. If you're having a punt on the players, on Cheltenham, I don't know, on the Greyhounds, then please remember to do so responsibly. Oh. Um, all the darts. Yeah, Luke Littler. Um, thanks very much for watching. We'll see you again next Tuesday. Stay safe, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>